Um, my name is JJ from Opus VL. We're a, um, uh, we do Sapil software development uh, over in the UK. And I'm going to talk about uh, CPAN dependencies. Now, we're all here because we love Perl. And one of the reasons that we love Perl is, of course, the CPAN. And the CPAN is, is really, really great, right up until the point that this happens. So you try and run something, you are missing dependencies. So you go off, you install the dependencies, and then run your script again, and that happens. Another one. And you end up in a chain of things. You're in CPAN dependency hell, CPAN devils on your case, and you can't get anything done. And you just end up going round and round and round. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you will be sitting there thinking, well, well, hang on. It's a solved problem. We don't do that anymore. We've got CPANM, we've got local lib. And, uh, and CPANM, local lib, they bootstrap themselves. So even if you, you know, you're on a system where you don't have root access, things like that, you can get it going. So brand new Perl. There's even a nice domain name. Just pipe C CPAN minus into Perl, tell it to upgrade itself, and that's it, done. You've got a fully, fully working CPAN client. No, no configuration needed. The problem, however, is this. I'll turn the brightness up. <laughs> the dark pan. The dark pan is all of the code you have that isn't on CPAN. So all of your internal you know, company stuff, things you've done for specific clients that, you know, for whatever reasons, have to be proprietary. Dependency management on that is still a bit of a problem. Now, there's some solutions. Uh, RPMs, DEBs, uh, they work for, for some people. Um, not really myself. Um, other people, it doesn't work for either. So it's, it's not really RPMs and DEBs and the, the, you know, the sort of Linux and Unix package management. It doesn't solve the problem in the general case. Not cross, they're not cross-platform. So what, uh, what I do and what we do at, uh, at Opus VL is to use the CPAN packaging system. You know, CPAN modules install fine. Uh, you know, we've got the dependency problem covered. We've got CPANM, we've got local lib. From that perspective, it is a solved problem. So, so how can we use the, the CPAN packaging system for our own code? Essentially, building our own CPAN and uploading to that. Start of this is CPAN Mini. CPAN Mini uh, lets you uh, build a, a minimal mirror of CPAN uh, yourself. It's, um, it's a bit different to a full mirror, because CPAN Mini only downloads the, uh, the latest versions of all the modules from, you know, from the main CPAN. So it, it reduces the, the size from you know, something approaching 6 gigs to something that's close to 2 gigs. It's a lot more manageable. And one of the, the good things with CPAN Mini is from when it was released, it, it spawned a, a whole list of, of extension modules and, and other things. As people thought, you know, CPAN Mini is great, and it, but it's also extensible, so we can build our own stuff around it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is, is CPAN Mini Inject. And what CPAN Mini Inject does is if you have a CPAN Mini mirror, you can push your own modules into it, and it handles building all the, the index files and so on, so it just works as a normal CPAN. Problem is it's a bit tricky to use. It's, um, you know, it, do, uh, it does work, just, you know, not quite in the, uh, in the most usable fashion. Think, but thinking about the problem a little bit more, what I actually wanted to build was, was not my own CPAN, but my own PAUSE. Now, PAUSE is, um, 
the, the people who are CPAN authors in this room will, will know this already, but uh, PAUSE is the Perl Authors Upload Server. And it's, it's the mechanism by which somebody who's written a, written a CPAN module, packaged it, they've got their tar.gz file, the PAUSE is how that gets from the, the developer's laptop into the CPAN itself. Uh, Pause provides uh, various interfaces as a, a web, web interface. You can log into, upload your module. It then does all the indexing, um, pushes it through to CPAN, and you get email reports and, and so on. It's, um, it's really good, very, very reliable. So looking on CPAN to see if uh, anyone had uh, done this before, and let's say th there was Mini-Inject Remote, which didn't really work too well. Um, so what I decided to write was CPAN mini inject REST. So a REST API that sits on top of CPAN mini inject. So once we've got something exposing a nice API and something we can you know, easily interact with over HTTP, we can do local clients, we can do remote clients, we can build a web interface, loads of stuff. So CPAN Mini Inject REST is, as the name suggests, a REST API. The remote, um, the remote injection is, is where it really becomes very useful um, because it supports authent authentication. So you're running that over HTTP, which means you can proxy it, you can run it over HTTPS, you can use client-side certificates for authentication, you can use username password for authentication. So if you've got multiple developers, you can quite easily expose your CPAN mini mirror, you know, publicly or, or semi-publicly and, you know, have a re reasonable confidence that, you know, everything's SSL encrypted and, and so on. The other important thing that Pause does that, uh, that you may not realize is it enforces version changes. As a module author, once you've uploaded something to Pause, you can never upload the same file name ever again. So you upload a module and suddenly find, you know, I didn't update the changes file, or I forgot this bit, or something like that. There's a huge bug in it. It's impossible for you as a module author to just change it and upload it back using the same name. You have to bump the version number. And I think that behavior is, is really, really valuable. Um, you know, it just prevents so many little mistakes. You know, you're ver using version 1.23 and somebody else is using version 1.23. You want to know that they're identical. So CPAN Mini Inject REST also enforces version changes. Now we come to a client. I know I'm getting very imaginative in naming modules. I should really think of something a bit better. CPAN Mini Inject REST client is a client for CPAN Mini Inject. It's, uh, it's a command line app, uh, so it gives you you know, various, various options to query the mirror, to upload modules, to download modules, to see what you've got, uh, and so on. So our typical workflow using this, write your code, check it into version control, build a CPAN package. So all the code, uh, everything that we write uh, internally at Opus, uh, whether it's code for ourselves or code for customers, everything starts off as a CPAN style distribution. So the first thing anybody types is, you know, module starter, name of module, and that builds, module starter builds the, the skeleton distribution for you, all the files in the right place, gives you a makefile.pl, and so on. So people work on code, check into Git, check out, decide they want to build a package, so you just do perl make file dot pl make make dist um, probably do make manifest in that as well and upload it to to our local cpan and we do this using the mcpani client command just give it command add tell it where your mirror is and file name and that's it done 
The other end of the, end of the chain is actually installing things from your mirror. And the CPAN minus client has got two very useful options. Uh, dash dash mirror, which chooses the mirror to use. But the key one is dash dash mirror only. Now, when you're using CPAN M, um, what CPAN M actually does is it queries um, public data sources over the internet um, instead of parsing the index file itself which is one of the reasons that CPAN M is very, very quick. So it goes out to, I think, Google App Spot, uh, search.cpan.org, and so on, to try and find the module that you want to install. Um, now, using that with a local mirror, and a local mirror with our own private code in, there's two problems. One, it isn't going to find it. Search, you know, the the definition of a private mirror is that it's private, so search.cpan.org won't know about it. And the other thing is that if it's making queries over the internet, I don't particularly want my you know, customer names and things like that to be leaked over to whatever site CPANM is going to query on. So mirror only means that CPANM will not go external. It will use the index files from the mirror you've given it. So with these tools, what we can do now is easily mix local dependencies, private code, with public dependencies on CPAN. If you're installing everything from your own mirror, then you can just put the the, you know, your own internal dependencies in your matefile.pl exactly the same as you would declare a dependency for a module that's on CPAN. And, and it just works, CPANM figures it, figures it out, happy days. Distribution, however, is slightly different. If you're distributing software out to a client um, for them to install, uh, or you want to install something to a, you know, a, a remote data center or, or something like that, you may not want to actually give your clients full access to your own mirror because they, you know, they could install stuff maybe they haven't paid for or, or see what other clients you've got and so on. It, it, it breaks the privateness of it. Um, so the other thing that's very useful to be able to do is to actually distribute software and say, right, here you go, here's something, go and install it. And whenever we talk about distributing software, there's, there's one thing that always comes to mind, which is uh, Elaine's law. Uh, if anyone knows uh, Elaine Ashton, she said that the one thing that you must always, you know, the only thing you need to know about distributing software. And that's completely true. If you can make it easy to install, people are going to use it. If it's a pain in the ass, they're not. The so last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, App C package, which hopefully, well, which makes Perl software compliant with Elaine's law. Creates an install package. So it's very different to, it's not an RPM, it's not a DEB, it's, it's a Perl install package um, that you can just run. Self contained installer, all the dependencies are there. And this turned out, um, you know, it sounds like a relatively complex problem to do, but it turned out to be really, really uh, quite straightforward to write because um, somebody else did all the hard work. Uh, that is, uh, that is Mir Gower, who, uh, who wrote CPAN minus and plaque and lots and lots of other things. It was, uh, you know, a bit of a, a pearl legend. Um, so C package itself is, is a fairly thin wrapper around CPAN minus. Now, if you think about what a CPAN client's going to do, analyze dependencies and download the dependencies. CPAN M can already do that. And it's got a very useful um, little known feature where you can say, tell CPAN M, don't actually install it, just tell me what the dependencies are download them all and put them in this, in this uh, directory. So after CPANM has done all that work, uh, what CPackage does is it writes an install.pl script 
um, so that you then have you know, a tar file, contains all the dependencies, contains your install.pl, ship that out to somebody else. It bundles a copy of cpanm internally, so all, they have to, all the recipient has to do is run install.pl, and that's it. They don't need cpan. So obviously, install it cpanm, and then just type cpackage module name, now, because cpackage is a wrapper around cpan minus, it accepts the same command line options, so we can give it dash dash mirror, we can give it dash dash mirror only. Uh, what you will see that it builds you is uh, a package directory. Um, a bin directory contains containing an embedded copy of itself and an install.pl script. So do that and, and you're done. Now, in the install.pl is again a wrapper around cpanm, so takes the same command line options, etc. So you can give it the dash dash sudo option or the dash dash force option if you don't want to run your tests, things like that. Um, so perl install.pl dash dash sudo installs all your stuff as root on the, uh, on the target machine. So we're now in a situation where software distribution in Perl, no internet's required. No CPAN clients required, no configurations required, and we've got a self contained installer. So, CPAN het dependency heaven, done. <laughs> also, now we're we have, um, you know, at work, been eating our own dog food on this. We've, I think we've got, getting on for 100 modules now in our own private side of the mirror. Each of those, has, you know, has multiple versions and, and so on has been updated a lot of times. So it's, um, it's saved us a hell of a lot of time deploying stuff. It's, uh, it's very good. Um, I should also mention we're actually hiring at the moment. We have a job on jobs.pearl.org, as I'm sure lots of the other speakers are giving the same message out today, which, which is good to see. Uh, so, any questions? Yes? Uh, that's an interesting question. Would you suggest this approach as a temporary uh, deployment area to, do you mean like to test? Yeah, so you, you could deploy, put your own modules onto your private CPAN before uploading them to the, to the main one. Um, I think that's actually a very good idea because it would be a good way of, uh, of being able to test all your dependencies and be sure that you can install on a clean Perl before you actually upload something to the, to the real CPAN. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be uh, that'd be a good idea. Um, yes. Do do it. Sorry, I didn't. Oh, distiller. Um, Okay, I mean, in, so the, the question was, do I know anyone who's using this in conjunction with Distilla? Yeah. Um, personally, I don't use Distilla myself, so I've never tried it. Um, in theory, though, um, the, the, the mini CPAN inject REST client and C package, they sort of take over from the point that a .tar.gz distribution has been created. So it wouldn't really matter which, um, which system you're using to, to create those, whether it's Xutils Make Maker or Module Install or Discilla or, or something, or Module Build even, or, or something else. Um, as long as you can get to the point where you've got a tar file suitable for going onto CPAN, then you can use this.
uh, MC Panay Klein. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we use a, a similar thing. Uh, we've got, um, we, we have a release script um, at Opus that when you type release.sh, it bumps the version number, uh, runs the tests, does a, um, does a git commit, does a git pull and push, um, and put, you know, puts a commit message that says re release this version on this date. Um, so yeah, if that can be automated in Dzil, that would be really good. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Cool. Uh, yes? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So apparently there is a, a distiller plugin that uses the older CPAN Mini Inject remote. So it doesn't support some of the features that the, the REST client supports, such as encryption and authentication, but already exists for Decilla. Is that right? Yeah. Cool, thank you. Uh, oh, zero minutes, we've got to go. <laughs> okay, thank you all for listening.